I've been looking at the chalk plaque as an illustration here in a book um, that's an, in Salisbury Museum and the one that's in Salisbury Museum is the one, the top one here. So that's the side, front of the side and the front again and as you can see from the writing it says it was found at Butterfield Down in 1990. These two other ones were found slightly somewhere slightly different but as you can see from our photograph in the film um, it's got these little scratch marks and I was, I've always wondered about these little scratch marks from way back in time because this is, this is a Stone Age object and it's always made me think maybe, this is just me thinking, this is not a fact, it's just my, my idea maybe this is some kind of way of Stone Age people telling a story so I've looked up a little bit of information about how people wrote down things in the past so if you go way back in time probably the first kind of writing you get or the first kind of telling of a story is cave art, you know cave paintings? So here we go, here's my yellow paper. I don't, I'm sure you've seen something on television, or maybe you could look it up in a book. But if you look up Stone Age cave art, um, it's not just animals, it's actually things happening. Now that means, that actually means something, it's, I'll explain that in a minute, but let's have a go at some cave art. So I'm gonna have a go at some very po popular cave art. Uh, I hope this goes well because you're all watching. It's going to be quite embarrassing if it doesn't. Can you get a feeling for what it is? Now the cave art, they've got funny little... You get a feeling for what it is? It goes, and that goes up there and then it goes down again. And then there's a bit there. And then it goes around. I do hope that you're now thinking that looks a bit like a cow. Because the cave art I've looked at, they do have funny legs. And then of course they always have an eye. Now then, that's not a story, that's a, that's a slightly strange picture of a cow. How you make a story and what happens with the cave paintings are, you will see all around our great big cow. Ah, this kind of thing starts to happen. And again, I've looked and they've got kind of funny, fun, funny legs there. It looks like it's got some kind of pajamas on or something. But then what, there's something actually happening because that appears. So what's happening? There's your story. So we think that actually, Stone Age people could talk, it would sound very different. You wouldn't, I wouldn't understand what they were saying. Again, another that's telling us a story. It's now a story of a hunting trip. Um, so it is telling a story. So this means that people were talking to each other and telling each other about the story of the time when Gary and Emily went hunting and they caught this really big um, cow. Let's, let's say it's a cow. I think it's a cow. Let's hope it's a cow. So people were talking and they were recording a story, but there's not, there's no words there as we know it, but this is a story and it was found, uh, well, a very similar picture to this was found in a cave in France showing that people were talking in the Stone Age. So that's about 3800 BC. And then I thought, well, so what happens next? Because we've got A, B, C, D. What happens next? How do we move on? Well, the next one, a new piece of paper, we have to go along, we've, we've left France, we have to go to the Mediterranean, the sea right down um, south of, of, way, way, way south of, of England, south of France, and then we go from France, we go along, you carry along the Mediterranean, you go past um, Greece, Italy, Greece, you get right to the end of the Mediterranean, and you will find Iraq. Yeah, it's actually right on the, on, on the, um, right on the end of um, the Mediterranean. And there's a language that was started there, 3,000, so I'll write the numbers, 3,200 BC. And uh, so we've got our, this one is 3,800 BC. You see that my numbers there. But we've got, um, and it's called cuneiform. I'll put it on the screen for you, cuneiform. So this was invented in Iraq. And this was because the people in around about the area that is now called Iraq, it was called different things then were trading, they were selling things, and they wanted to send messages. They wanted to send messages such as, can you bring me three baskets of grain? Or, three baskets of grain now costs this much money, or whatever, they were swapping for things. And they, the, the word cuneiform comes from the, um, the word um, wedge, and they were writing in wedges, so I'll, try, I'll have a go, I've had a look at this. So I'm using a different pen now with sort of a wedgy bit on it. So, for example, the letter A I read is, you can see it's dark on one side and then it gets thinner. So we've got there like that. So we've got letter A, apparently looks like one of those, and then three go down from there. One, two, three. That in cuneiform is the letter A. I'll have a go at B. Again, 
it starts, this is called wedge, so it's all kind of wedge shaped. Um, they would be, with a, um, a bit of a feather, they'd be pushing it into wet clay, and then when the clay dries, it's a really nice solid message that they could pass to somebody miles and miles and miles away. So I'm doing the letter B, and then the letter C. You see, so it's all these, but so just like you learn to read and write, people would learn to read and write cuneiform. And then, language moves on a little bit, but we've got the chalk plaque. We've gone from cave paintings to cuneiform, the people around about Iraq um, were doing, and then the Phoenicians um, came up with the language, a way of writing anyway, and the Greeks took this on. Right. We have a new piece of paper now, let's have a, that's a blue one, another blue one, I like blue. And the Phoenicians, I'll change pen again, were writing in a very different kind of way as well, but they were doing things such as, here's some words I found, Mm. But then there's, there's there's a few, have a look, there's a few that look quite familiar to what you might be doing in your school books today. So I would think, I'd have a go at reading that and I'd say, does that say the word nyek? But it doesn't, it's a completely different language, so they look like the, the words that would spell nyek, but actually it's completely different. So this Phoenician is about 800 to 750 BC. And then it moves on and on and on. And then we get to, of course, where are we today? Well, the last one, the straight line under that one, is, is us. We've moved on from that one. So can you see, you've got a very strange timeline here. I would love to put the chalk plaque in, but I'll get told off by the museum. So we start off with this one, and then we move on to cuneiform, and then we move on to the Phoenician writing, and then go through time, we end up with what we've got today, A, B, C, D, D. So that's where we come from. So that's why I'm convinced that our little chalk plaque in the museum is actually some kind of writing. Let's have a go at copying the marks on the chalk plaques. Can you see there's a kind of a round one round the side there and lots of other ones joining it in there. I'm not going to bother counting them exactly, we're just going to make a bit of a guess, a bit of a copy. So what we can do, so I'll put the book away. And start off with a pen and that's all maybe. So let's just pretend, let's have a, a shape there. Okay. And so it's got the marks that went round like that. That worked quite well. Pencil on the outside and then a thick thicker mark. And then there were these lines. And I th I think they kind of went in pairs. So I'm, when I'm drawing this, I'm thinking in pairs. Like that. So this is, this is really quite easy on paper. But let's take this experiment a little bit further. I'm not quite sure what happens on the end there because the, remember the chalk was a bit broken. It's a bit broken up then. Let's take it a little bit further. And let's actually use some other materials. Right, let's use some real materials. We could use chalk. Um, if you could find a nice piece of chalk outside, it has to be quite a big piece of chalk, but warning, it's gonna make your hands really filthy, really filthy hand warning. Um, so I've got three other types of material. Let's start with, anybody know what kind of material that is? It's, it's, yeah, it's dirty, we know that. Um, a piece of slate, uh, I found it lying around outside. And for my scratching, I found something, you need obviously something harder than slate. So I found a nail. And so there's our design there. Let's have a go. What's it work? How's it work on slate? So if this is a metal nail, and we're talking about something made in the Stone Age, so they wouldn't have metal, would they? So it would be scraping stone on stone. So if you had one stone, you'd have to obviously find another stone that's even tougher. And actually, this is working quite well. Not bad at all. I had a bit of a feeling that this might work quite well. Do you know why? Because I know, as there's a drawing, I know a little bit about history, and I happen to know what Victorian children did when they were practicing writing in school. So there's a little mission for you. Look it up, maybe on the internet or books, if you've got books, whatever works best for you. Have a look, what did Victorian children write with? Actually, it lasted quite a long time until well into the, into the next century, it wasn't just the Victorians. 
um, because paper was used to be really expensive. So they used something else. Have a look. So this 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 scraping the um the slate is working really really well. And I could I could do so there we are. How about that? I'm quite pleased with that. Not quite finished. Uh, my lines they're not brilliant. So if this is left outside maybe in the rain, it might rub away. So what I'd want to do if I wanted to make it permanent was maybe I'd scratch it even more. I'd sit down and do that line again and again and again and again until it was really thick. So let's try some slate, not bad. Not bad for our Stone Age attempt, although we're cheating using metal. Let's try something else. Slate worked really well. Let's try something a little, a little bit crumbly, but worked really well for scratching without cheating with our metal tool. Let's try another material. And I found a piece of tile. This used to be on a roof and it's fallen off and broken. So it was just lying in the garden. It was made, all tiles like this are made from clay originally, so it would have been squishy clay and pushed into the shape that they wanted and then left to dry and then just make it really solid and really waterproof, put it in a kiln in an oven to cook it to make it solid. So it's, it couldn't be a Stone Age thing because they weren't making these kind of things, roof tiles in the Stone Age, but let's give it a go anyway. So there's our design again. Let's have a go at this, so I'm scratching. Ooh, it makes a horrible noise. Now then, the problem is, can you see the slate, it was quite easy. But with this, can you see how jerky and, and awkward it is? Now, if I wanted to make a really smooth circle, let's just do it uh, still on the back, really smooth circle like that, I don't have problems because it's really difficult. This makes me think that maybe Stone Age people found it difficult to write on their stones, to scratch on their stones, because it is difficult to do nice. I'm trying to do a smooth circle here, but it's really difficult when you're scratching onto stone because it just wants you to go in straight lines like that, straight jerky lines like that. So that's why I think they were struggling in the Stone Age to scratch exactly what they wanted onto their stones. Maybe that's why they used chalk, because if you try chalk, apart from getting really messy, you'll find out how soft it is. So let's have another go. It is difficult, it's really difficult. So I think this is our experiment, just to show it's really quite difficult to scratch into stone. See, the lines aren't quite going exactly where I want them to because it kind of runs away with me. It's quite really quite difficult to keep the scratching under control. Mm, not very brilliant. That's that's okay. Um, with the pen, it was a heck of a lot easier. Really easy.